The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. Hi, I'm Amber Bell, and this is Real Agriculture. I am here today with Rosie Xia of Alberta Grains, and we are doing a wheat school. In today's wheat school, we're going to be talking about drought. So welcome, Rosie. It's amazing to see you again. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. So we're talking about drought. You were telling me earlier that drought is one of the big topics of concern with producers. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. We've seen some drought conditions across different parts of the prairies over the past few years, I would say, starting starting 2021 when we have that big drought and created a big water deficit in the soil and when it was not replenished in the following years in some region that challenge get carried on and we see definitely some drought pockets in 2024 also. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as you're talking to growers about drought what are what are some of the things that are being said what are you guys responding with and what is the best way for growers to be managing drought conditions um yeah it's mostly drought has a big impact on yield mm -hmm. and we were at a farm in south central alberta and they usually they're usually in that good moisture area and they or often see a barley crop of 100 bushel an acre. This year they got around half that, which they're not very Ouch. happy with. And in the region that's more um, often experienced droughts, like I was in Oyen area inspecting field trials and the, the hard red spring wheat were about this tall, the shorter varieties, oh. and the heads are tiny. That's when you see like, yeah, they are really stressed out and trying to produce the kernels, but it's impacted. And another big factor when there's drought is um, thin kernels. Mm. So for malt barley, you want more plump kernels to meet the grade. And um, for wheat, a plump kernel contributes to the yield. So, and th that's definitely um, hit the f some farmers harder than the others, the ones especially in the drought. Um, drought regions, yeah. Right, and so, because obviously we can't change the weather, um, so what are you guys recommending to growers? Like, how can they respond? Because if we have more years of drought, subsequent mm -hmm. years of drought, we're gonna end up with more problems, right? Yeah, as hard as, as it is to predict the weather or ask the mother nature to follow everybody's wishes, um, there are a few things that farmers can consider and play around to mitigate that risk. Because of the drought, there's more thin kernels. So for farmers who might be saving that seed for next year's crop, you might want to send it to accredited seed mm. lab to test for especially emergence rates and vigors to make sure that what you're using for next year is a good seed lot that's going to set the next year to a good start. And um, similar idea, something you can also do in the fall is um, leave a higher stubble to help trap the snow. Uh, you might ask how much that helps and a researcher named Philip Harder from U of Calgary has actually done that study. So on average for every centimeter of snow you are able to trap, that translates to about one millimeters of soil moisture. Wow. So if you're able to uh, trap about 25 centimeter or close to a foot of snow, that translates to uh, about an inch of soil moisture and an in extra inch of soil moisture can translate um, on average five to seven bushels of extra yield in wheat and seven to nine bushels in barley just by trying to trap more snow. So mm. um, definitely consider that for the farm. Um, Are you seeing more growers using stripper headers? Uh, in the south, definitely mm -hmm. there are people adopting that and um, historically south has been experiencing some drought and the strip, the right. farmers that use stripper headers can um, yeah, get more snow trapped on their land. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's incredible. And are there any other tools that... For sure, yeah. Another also, the, the other approach also comes with the um, comes into the soil moisture part mm -hmm. is um, reduced tillage or no-till. 
So Dr. Ross, Ross McKenzie from Alberta Ag, he's retired now, but he did study on like how tillage impact uh, soil moisture. So for, on average, for every pass of tillage, you lose about half an inch of moisture. And that's like half of that 25 centimeters of snow. So um, if it's possible on the farm, try to reduce the tillage and keep the moisture in the soil. Right, that's great. And do you have any words of encouragement for producers as we go into the next growing season, you know, and they might be making some plans, any words for them? Yeah, yeah. Um, the plants might already start this fall, like choosing a crop or a variety that is more um, drought tolerant. Mm -hmm. um, generally, cereal crops are slightly more drought tolerant than say canola or a tuber crop like a uh, potato. So ask around your uh, local agronomists or seed retailers and also try to figure out which varieties might be more drought tolerant because there are different slight differences but we are not putting that information in the seed guide yet because mm -hmm. it's um, not that well tested but there are differences. Yeah, another um, thing to note is the fertilizer because if you're expecting drought then a healthy crop is able to manage that drought stress better than a stressed out crop already. Right. Give the crops a balanced nutrition and set them up to a good start and good root development, help them to handle that drought better. And um, if you're doing seed placed fertilizer, pay attention to your soil type and soil moisture because um, drier soil, in drier soil you run a higher risk of um, fertilizer burn in the seeds and seedlings. Early seeding is another tool that helps you use the early spring moisture better. And in this year's case, actually I had an example. I was at a field day in the last week of June in Lethbridge and um, a trial of ultra early seeded durum was demonstrated. Um, we could see that the durum that was seeded around March 15 or when the soil was two degrees, that's, people think that's pretty low, but the durum actually grow pretty well and that treatment was the most advanced. They were already heading out in the last mm. week of June and considering we experienced that big heat wave in like mid to late July, that crop that headed out early is able to, was able to escape a lot of that um, heat stress that better than the crop that was seeded later. That's amazing. And are there ways that producers can use some of the soil drought maps as tools to mm -hmm. make growing decisions? Uh, absolutely. Soil moisture plays a big part in that yield expectation. So producers can assess their own conditions, looking at the soil maps or telling from their field sampling to decide what would be a realistic um, yield expectation and um, plan a balanced nu soil nutrient plan. Yep. Right. Well, that's incredible. Thank you so much. It was wonderful seeing you again. Yeah, wonderful seeing you. And that was Rosie Xia on Real Agriculture.